So I'll discuss with your partner what was challenging about doing the mediator, being a mediator. Challenging is a nice way to say difficult. What was difficult about doing the negotiation? Or di being the mediator? Not easy to listen to the people's opinions. Mm -hmm. Why not? them. Okay, that kind of thing. Uh, so does anybody have any other question or comments about the mediation? Do you think that, yes? Profit their interest. Profit their people's interest. What do you mean profit people's interest? If the increase team wants to go theory and but the I thought to I would try have a hearing. So if the team uh, gave a hearing, the the mediator talked to Albert and she gave the her mother's hearing. So uh, <laughs> Mediator and the Albert talk to differently, and in they have they have they have permission to give the earring to give her. Um, yes, it's very not easy question. I think that's the hard thing to do. Yes, to persuade Albert or persuade the person yes. in the mediation. How can you persuade people then? If that's difficult, how can you persuade people? What did the woman do in the video we watched? Persuade. How did she persuade the guy? One guy was being difficult. How did she persuade him? Gave a, a reality test. She gave him a reality test, right? What was the reality test she gave him? If the company gave the money and they did run it, Pro problem of end of the deadline. It's going to cost a lot of time and money, right? Uh -huh. And it would be bad for their company. If they don't make a solution. So she did some reality testing. 
she was assertive and she was able to persuade him. Do you think you can do mediation now? Do you have much experience doing mediation in your life? Oh, yes. In the real life when you work, especially if you're kind of like the boss, mediation is a useful practical skill to have. When I was working, one time I was in charge of some volunteers and one volunteer coach, he was coaching the kids some sports. The kid was misbehaving, so he grabbed the kid by the arm. You're not allowed to touch the children, right? The kid's arm had some bruise. Do you understand bruise? How do you say bruise in Korean? Bondilda? Bondilda. So the kid's arm had some bruise, like fingerprint or that kind of thing. Because it was man and the kid was just eight years old or nine years old. So when the kid went home, his parents were very angry. So I had to mediate between the volunteer coach and the parents. So that's a kind of practical thing you have to do in the real life mediation if you're working. If you're the boss, you have two employees. One employee and the other employee has a problem. You need to mediate between the two of them. So in that case, we have to explain to the parents that the coach is just a volunteer. And mainly we have to talk to the coach and explain to the coach that, he, you know, that's against the code of ethics. There are some code of ethics for the volunteers have to sign. It says we, you cannot touch the children, right? So then the coach admit that he made a mistake. But at the start, he was kind of slow to admit that it was a mistake because he thought the child was a very badly behaved child and he's just a volunteer okay so he didn't think it was a big deal okay so also the parents was very angry but you have to explain to the parents that the guy is coaching your child as a volunteer most people you have to pay them to coach the children the sports right so he's using his own time for free and that maybe he didn't understand the power, his power, so he made, he made a mistake and he says he's sorry, okay, it's not going to happen again, okay, so then the parents can understand that they're getting some advantage, the guy is giving a free coaching to their children, so they, in the end, they accept that the guy apologize and it won't happen again, okay, but maybe the guy, it's, Tricky situation for me because if I'm too strict on the guy, he's going to quit. Then I need to find another volunteer, right? Because he's not getting paid. So I don't want him. Uh, it's not easy to find the volunteers to do that kind of thing, right? So if he really made a mistake, then it's not like he punched the child. Just he just caught his arm, and it was just too much force catching the arm. So the point is that. When you, in the real life, after you graduate, if you're working, mediation can be a useful skill. So do you have any other comments about the mediation? It is hard to make a creative solution. Yes, that's the skill of the mediator. Listening. Asking probing questions. If you ask the probing question, you get the right information from the people. Okay? Then if you have the right information from the people, then you can make it a better solution, creative solution. So skill is asking, listening, asking probing questions. Then you have to be creative to make a solution. But from talking to lawyers, uh, here we have litigation. If we don't, if mediation or arbitration don't work, we have to go to litigation. <clears throat> but of course, some people hire a lawyer for arbitration or for mediation. So I asked the lawyers, what do they think about arbitration and mediation? And they told me, they like to go to arbitration or mediation if they have a very weak case. Do you understand weak case? They don't have a very strong argument. Then they like arbitration or mediation. But if they think they're going to win, they have a very strong case, then they don't like mediation or arbitration. The reason is that 
the mediation and arbitration tend to go 50-50 a lot, right? So they try to make in the middle, 50-50. Do you understand 50-50? So if I have a very strong case, I don't want to have a 50-50 situation. Okay? So the lawyers explain like that. If they have a very weak case, then yes, they like mediation or arbitration. They can get a 50-50 solution, right? Yes. Then, otherwise, they want to do the litigation if they have a very strong, strong case. <coughs> so, I guess that that's one problem with mediation and arbitration. The mediator or the arbitrator think too much about sharing the making kind of a 50-50 solution for both people, right? So they have to also think the mediator about being fair. What is a fair solution for both people? In the last exercise, I noticed two or three, two of the mediators at least, they made a solution which was quite unfair to one of the parties, okay? So you have to remember, if you're the mediator, try to be fair. Why is that not working? <clears throat> so, also lawyers can have a negative viewpoint of ADR, like mediation or arbitration. Here is a joke. Lawyers think ADR means alarming drop in revenue. A, alarming, B, drop, or revenue. Okay? Do you understand revenue? like profit. So the lawyers like going to court because if you go to court you have to pay a lot of money to the lawyers. Okay? If you do ADR, then the lawyers don't get the money. Okay? So they don't really like. So you have to remember that sometimes. If you're dealing with a lawyer, the lawyer might not want you to solve the problem with mediation or arbitration. They might want you to go to court. So the lawyer might try to convince you Let's go to court, right? <laughs> then you have to pay me a lot of money. Okay, but you have to remember the lawyer is also a business person, like a car salesman or so on. They want to get business for themselves. Okay? So often we can solve, these days it's getting more popular for companies. Instead of going to the court to solve the problem through mediation or arbitration, okay? we discuss the advantages like it's private, it costs less. What do you think? Do you like the idea of arbitration? Yes. Okay. You can put in the contract when you make the contract. If there is any problem, we both agree to do arbitration first. Okay. Then you have, the other side has to go to arbitration. So then let's move on uh, to talk about, we're still talking about the process. So we have two main uh, ways, processes of doing the uh, negotiations. So we talked about we can do mediation or arbitration, but if we decide to do negotiation, not mediation or arbitration, then we have two main ways. The first one is decide, announce and defend. Now, you can have this in any relationship. My old co-worker used to use this way. My wife also uses this way. So when we, after we got married, my wife went to the high mart. At the same time, I had some football game. <laughs> so she called me and she said, do you want to go to high mart? And I said, but you know I have a football game. And she said, okay then, is it okay if I buy some things? And I said, uh, she said, well, if you want to come, you can give up your football game and come to a high mart. <laughs> So I said, oh, okay, then you can buy some things, but please check with me, right, first. Then she came home and she bought really expensive everything, really expensive <laughs> TV, really expensive fridge, really expensive, everything was really expensive, some computers, so I was very angry. <laughs> so my wife used this tactic, decide, she decided, then she announced, come home and announce to me, I bought all these expensive things, and then defend. She tried to defend. But we need a good TV because we need to watch in the thing, right? 
or we need a good fridge because we need to keep a lot of food. I have a lot of kimchi, right? My mother <laughs> makes me a lot of food and I need to put in the fridge. So first she decided, then she announced, and then she defended, right? But I made her send back something that we didn't need. So we made some agreement. And then that was the electronic goods. So then I was going to decide about the furniture. So our house is quite funny. It has expensive electronic goods, but really cheap furniture. <laughs> Come to the house. <laughs> the kitchen table is worth about seven and one. Right? But the TV is very expensive. So I buy the very cheap thing, the cheapest one. My wife buys the expensive one. So in the end, my wife admitted that she used this tactic. She said, if we went to the shop together, I wouldn't agree to buy the expensive TV or the expensive things. So she decided to use this process for the negotiation. Just she decides, then she announces, and then she defends. So it kind of worked. She got to keep most of the things, right? <coughs> so. Uh, in this case, we make a decision on the project. So also, my co-worker used to do this. He would make a decision about something. It's very frustrating for me. Then he would announce and try to defend it. And already he made the decision then, without consulting me. Then I had no choice. Okay, what's the reason? He thought that I wouldn't agree. Right? So he just made the decision and told publicly the people. And then later I tell me about the decision. But uh, I wasn't very happy with that way, right? So we make a decision, and then <coughs> we just do this with the people who need to approve the deal. Then we announce the deal, and then if we have opposition, we try to defend. We say, oh, this is why we did this, this is why I did this, okay? So. This idea is we want to make a permanent and legally binding deal. <clears throat> so let's look at an example. So Stone Container Corporation is one of the world's largest paperboard entities. We use a decide uh, and defend approach on the forestry initiative in the last La Mosquita region of Honduras. Do you know Honduras? Where is Honduras? What, pro what continent? What continent is it on? Africa, Europe? So Central America, right? So <clears throat> they want to, make, to buy some forests to make paper. They're going to cut down the forest and make paper. Okay? So they decided they're just going to do this agreement with the government and then later announce and then try to defend it. Because they thought we're going to have a lot of opposition. Okay, like my wife thought, I'm going to have a lot of opposition. Or my co-worker thought, I'm going to have a lot of opposition from Chris. Right? Maybe I'm a difficult person, maybe I can learn from the situation. Okay? But they think they're going to have a lot of opposition, so they just want to make a deal with the government. Sometimes there's even bribery involved. Do you understand bribery? Especially in South America, when I was in Ecuador, they bribed some government official for the oil. They can take the oil with no tax, right? So the company just bribed the government official. And the problem is there is no uh, extradition. Do you understand extradition? <coughs> extradition is when one person makes a crime in one country, then they can be moved to the other country. So there is no extradition agreement between most South American countries and the U.S. So they just go, run away to the U.S., to Miami. They go to live in Miami with all the money. Then the country in South America, they don't get them back because they have no agreement with the U.S. extradition agreement. But this is the problem of the South American country because the judges are kind of corrupt. So the judges in the South American country don't organize extradition agreement with the US. Okay? So we can have that kind of situation. So they made an agreement just with the president and some minister, right? That we you sell us the forest and we'll cut down the trees and make paper. 
So they want, the president wanted to keep this secret until the deal was finished. But there was some leak, leak to the press. Do you understand leak? Yes. If you were in a boat, do you want to have a leak in the boat? No. Why not? It's going to sink if there's a leak, right? So leak we use for information. The information is leaked. Okay? So the agreement was leaked and it showed that there was a really big area of the forest. Stone was going to take a very big area of the forest in Honduras. So international activists from the Rainforest Action Network, you have some Hollywood stars, right? Very worried about the rainforest members of this network, other environmental, indigenous people, do you understand indigenous people, native people, like Indian people. When I was in Ecuador, the oil company was polluting the river with oil, so a lot of native people died because they need to use the river for water. They don't have any tap. So the water was all dirty with oil, they, were drink they had no choice to drink the water, they were dying, right? So you can have, if you're going to put down the forest, maybe the native people has to leave their home. So those people are not happy, okay? So just, there was some major protests in the capital city, the president withdrew his support, okay? So this was the failure of decide, announce and defend, okay? They tried to do a decide, announce, defend strategy, but there was some leak, there was some protest, and it failed. The company looked very bad, the president looked very bad. Okay. So this is one example. The other situation is a full consensus. Do you understand full consensus? What does consensus mean? But how many people agree? Or everybody agrees is consensus. Okay? Consensus means everybody agrees. Is it easy to make a consensus? No. In Europe, a lot of decisions are made by consensus. So they have very slow decision making. They have 27 countries in Europe. They want everybody to agree and be happy. Okay? So this seeks agreement among all the stakeholders. What is a stakeholder? Somebody who studied business ethics, what is a stakeholder? Involved in the business. Somebody who is, has some involvement or interest, not just involvement, even to have an interest, right? So anybody who has an interest in the result of the negotiation? Employees, NGOs, what's an NGO? Local Okay, so the Rainforest Action Committee. They might not be involved in the negotiation, but they have an interest in the negotiation. They want to save the rainforest, okay? Government. So in this time, in this case, we uh, try to make a document, right? And we uh, negotiate with all of the parties, and we keep, we can change it, okay? If there is some different event, we could change the document. Do you understand framework? Yes. Framework document is. In this case, they looked for a legally binding, detailed, permanent deal that doesn't change. Okay? It's finished, it can't be changed. Okay? Uh, in this case, they make a kind of document which can be changed later, because we're working with all the stakeholders together. So we make a framework, and we can change the framework later. So let's look at an example of full consensus approach. So another company, Concos. They wanted to uh, build a consensus for the environmental management plan for oil extraction in Ecuador, Ecuador in South America. So what is an environmental management plan? What does that mean? They have, they're going to take out the oil, but they need some way to protect the environment, even though they're taking out the oil. They have a plan to protect the environment. What kind of things could they do? Plant trees. Plant trees. Okay. Make sure their oil is not going into the rivers, right? Those kind of things. So they are going to build a consensus for their plan. 
So they brought together all the stakeholders for a four-day meeting on a floating hotel on the Rio on the river in Ecuador. Do you want to go to the floating hotel? No, why not? It sounds dangerous. Sounds dangerous. It's a hotel on a boat. Sounds nice, right? <laughs> so everybody should be happy. It's a nice location. Every all the stakeholders are there. What happened? It was a disaster, right? They brought all these groups together. All these groups don't like Congo because Congo is looking, taking the oil from Ecuador, right? So most of the groups, they don't like that. So they show their skepticism. Skepticism means they think Congo doesn't, they don't trust them or they don't believe them. Skeptic doesn't trust or believe people, okay? So they said Congo is not trying to help the environment. They're just trying to make a profit. So they, they, in fact, they had some suspicion, recrimination, like fighting on the boat together, okay, and suspicions. So in this case, this is also a failure. Full consensus approach didn't work. Okay, the different groups were fighting with the Hong Kong and didn't trust them and couldn't make a relationship. Okay, so Hong Kong tried to negotiate an agreement with some moderate environmental groups. Moderate means they're not really radical, they're just calm, quite calm environmental group. Then this was leaked and the other people got even angrier. So Conco then on the boat just tried to negotiate with just some of the stakeholders and ignore the other stakeholders. Then the other people got angrier. So this kind of one can also be unsuccessful or messy trying to make the full consensus. Okay? But these are the two main types of approach. Decide, announce, defend, or full consensus. So you can decide what process you want to use for your negotiation. How many people do you want to include? All the stakeholders or just decision makers? Based on the situation. So let's have a look at a successful one. This is a hybrid. Do you understand hybrid? Hybrid means using a little bit of both process. So Stone Container, the same company, they made another project in Costa Rica. Okay? Another, they want to buy the forest in Costa Rica. But they learned. They learned from their last experience. Okay? Last time they tried to do secretly agreement with the president. Okay? So this time they used the stakeholder process hosted by the government. So their talks included the stakeholder groups, but the stakeholders were just advisors. The stakeholders didn't have any power or mandate. They were just advisors. And the, the government and con stone container was going to make the decision. Okay? So uh, in the last case, we have the stone container. They just want to make the negotiation with the government. Okay, and this was a failure. So now they're including the stakeholders. But the stakeholders is just role is to give advice to the government. Okay, and then the government makes the still makes the decision. Okay, do you understand that idea? So they're not ignoring the stakeholders. They're asking stakeholders to come together. In the other case, we had the company try to make an agreement with all the stakeholders together, government and stakeholders together, and to make a decision. And they couldn't make any decision, right? The stakeholders didn't trust them, so they had a big fight and they couldn't make a decision. So this is a mixture. Just the stakeholders giving advice to the government and the government and the company making the decision together. Okay, this project also attracted protesters, but it got enough support. Because these people gave advice to the government and they felt like the government was listening to their advice, okay, then many of them supported this deal this time. And they had a new they, this project was successful. This is the successful example. Okay? So we can see that the process is important. If you have the right process, then you can get a good result in the negotiation. But if you take the wrong process, the wrong situation, 
you can end up with no results without making the negotiation. Okay. So this is probably generally the better way, the hybrid way. Include the stakeholders, but uh, at the same time you have to be clear about who the decision makers are in the end. <clears throat> so do you have any question about this, these processes? Decide, announce, defend, or full consensus? Hybrid consensus, hybrid situation though. So how long to discuss the this consensus? Consen how long to discuss? Yes. It, it takes a long time. So the, it's going to take a few months for the stakeholders to get together and meet and make a decision and advise the government on their decision. Okay? And then after that, the government is going to negotiate with us based on the advice of the stakeholders. But the government can decide, so they can change something. Here they can't change, they're all working together, so we can't... They have an equal power as the government. Here they, they have lower power, government has more power. So the government can ignore something they said, or decide, yes, I'll take this part. But if you include them, then that's better, including the stakeholders. If we don't include the stakeholders, we can have protests. Okay. Do you understand protests? A lot, and then the government might be under pressure. If there are a lot of protests, the government is going to give up. Why? Because the government wants votes. In the end of the day, a lot of people like to blame governments. If I've been to different countries in Ecuador or other countries, people always would like to blame the politician or the government. There might be some case where the politician is corrupt, they take some bribery. But it's not very common. Usually the governments just do whatever the people want. So governments are just usually representing people. Okay? If people don't want them to make to sell the forest, they're going to do some protest. The government is going to change their mind. Okay. We're not going to sell the forest. Because the government knows they're going to fall. The government will fall or won't get elected in the next election. So if we just ignore some group, then we can have that problem. On the other hand, we do with everybody together. It can be too confusing and difficult to find exact agreement. But we have to look at the situation, right? Depending on the situation, it might be better. If you're married to me, and you want to buy some uh, new uh, things for the house, which strategy are you going to use? Full consensus or decide, announce, and defend? <laughs> Which one are you going to use? Hmm? What? <laughs> You're not just going to do the same? Just buy the things and tell me later? Hmm? What about full consensus? Talking to me about that and discussing with me about the price? <laughs> no? So you have to decide on the situation which one works better, right? What? SC and SC. SC is the name of the company. The company that's making the negotiation with the government. <coughs> so actually this worked well for my wife, so she's using this too much these days. <laughs> the other summer we went to Europe. My wife told me, my mother is coming to Europe with us. If you want, you can come too. <laughs> I'm going to Europe with my mother. If you want, you can come. Do you want to come or not? <laughs> so, I had to go to Europe with her mother, right? Oh. But uh, anyway, it was okay. Her mother is nice. Oh. Korean, Korean mother-in-law is very nice, right? Treat the son-in-law like a king or something like that. So, anyway, I invited my mother too. So, in the end, my mother went on the trip together. My mother was very happy because I would never invite her. Otherwise. So now she likes my wife. My wife caused that she get invited somewhere together. <coughs> so usually now she does that. If she wants to bring her mother somewhere, just tells me, I'm going with my mother to the concert. Do you want to come? So 
So, what should I do? Huh? I, I don't mind actually because her mother is okay, so if her mother was not okay, I would have to do something else. What do you think? Are you guys going to use this strategy to decide and answer defense? Do you like that strategy? No. Hmm? You don't like it? Okay, it's one strategy, you have to decide on the situation. Uh, full consensus is usually a better strategy for making a relationship or a longer term relationship this way. <coughs> so, these are the important decisions we need to make about the design. We saw the example of uh, <coughs> the Irish, Northern Irish one and we saw the problems with the design. So, first one is auspicious. Auspicious means who controls the process. So, in this case we have to say, is it going to be the company? Is it going to be the government? So who is deciding the process at the start? Okay. So do I want to decide the process? Do I want to let the other side decide the process? Then mandate, who is making the decision? So is the government and me making the decision? Are the stakeholders making the decision? Here the stakeholders is just giving advice. It's clear that they're not making the decision. So sometimes it's good to be clear about people's mandate. Okay? Who is the person with power? Participation, who is going to participate? Decision rules, how are we going to make a decision? If you make teamwork, you should make a decision rule at the start. If we disagree, are we going to try and make everybody agree? Or are we going to make some uh, vote? Often one way is qualified majority voting. This is also often used in, in uh, Europe. Qualified majority means if we have more than 70%, not more than 50%. Okay? Just a normal vote is more than 50%. Okay? Qualified majority is between voting and consensus. Consensus 100%. Voting more than 50%. Qualified majority we might say 60% or 70%. If more than 70% agree, then it's passed. Okay? In the <coughs> Irish case study, they made subgroups. Okay? So only these people are responsible for this decision. Only these people are responsible for this decision. Okay? The agenda. Who deals with what issues? So again, in the Irish case, it took six months just to decide the agenda. So we can go back and look at the agenda again. So we have to decide who is, what issues are we going to talk about here? International relations, Irish and Northern Irish ties, UK-Irish relationship, business. Right? Business between the countries. These are the topics we're going to talk about. This is the agenda. Okay? Who's going to talk about these topics and who's going to be the chairperson? It took six months just to agree on this agenda. Okay? So agreeing the agenda is also uh, can be important. Um, <coughs> when we had the, the EU, the leaders of the EU meet together, Greece always wants to be on the agenda. Greece says, every time we have to discuss the crisis in Greece, okay? But Angela Merkel says, no, we're not wasting more time talking about Greece, okay? We already waste a lot of time talking about your crisis, so you're not on the agenda, okay? And then some countries support Greece. Let's put Greece on the agenda. Other countries don't support Greece. So it's an important decision. Is, are the EU leaders going to spend just, they just have one day or two days, are they going to spend four or five hours talking about Greece or not, right? So agenda is important too. So before the negotiations, we have to decide what's going to be on the agenda, what's not going to be on the agenda. And that can make a big difference if something is on the agenda or not. If Greece is not on the agenda, then we're not going to make any decision about helping Greece this time, okay? Uh, the staging of the process, so what's going to happen first, what's going to happen next. 
external communication. We saw here there was some leak, leaking. So who can communicate with the media? How often can they communicate? What can they say? And post-deal arrangements. So after the deal, how are we going to make sure that you follow the deal? Are we going to send somebody every month to check you're doing the following the deal? Okay. So these are the choices we need to make about the design of the process that we're going to follow. So to sum up about the process choice, will ADR be involved? Is it a good idea to use mediation? Okay. In the case of I discussed about my work where you had the volunteer and the parents, was it a good idea to use mediation or should they just negotiate together? Which do you think was better? The parents are very angry. The volunteer also feels like it doesn't matter, I can just quit my job. Mediation. Which is better? They negotiate or mediation? Mediation. Mediation, right? So we have to decide from the start. Will we use ADR or negotiation? Right? Arbitration. Then will we have a decide, announce, defend approach? Or a full consensus approach? Sometimes some things might be better. Then our hybrid approach. Then we use the checklist or the design. Okay? We have some things we can let happen naturally. So we could let the uh, external communication, we could let that happen naturally. Just whoever wants to talk to the press can just talk to the press. Okay? But some things we have to say, we want to decide. I want to decide the agenda. Okay? Then I can let you decide the staging, the time limit of, of the negotiation. So <coughs> we have to make those kind of decisions. So do you have any question about the process? We'll finish talking about the process and move on to ethics. So this uh, was chapter 7, if you want to read uh, this part we studied about. Sequence and process is chapter 7 in the book. Okay. So just for the test, we can see that chapter 7 we discussed sequence and process. Chapter 5, interests written on the PPT, right? Chapter 4, parties. Chapter 6, FATNA. Okay, so 4, 5, 6, 7. On the first weeks, we used uh, chapter 1 and 2, right? When we looked at the overview, the intro and the overview. <coughs> so, we skipped one chapter, I think it was chapter 3. Instead, we looked at some PDF, there was a PDF file of uh, just overview of negotiation. So, that is about half of the book then. Up until chapter 7 is covering about half of the book, which is just for setting up for the negotiation, right? The first half of the course. The second half of the course we'll start to talk about during the negotiation, okay? like psychological things and making value, creating value, that kind of thing. So today we're going to fin continue and finish talking about before the negotiations, so we're going to talk about ethics. So we should prepare, or we should have our own ethics, and we'll talk about agents. Okay, so... <clears throat> what is the difference between law and ethics? Who studied ethics last semester? What is the difference between law and ethics? Law is the basic, basic, basic right to keep the people happier. But ethics is the more higher to people uh, guide guide the ethics. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not legal, but if they Keep the ethics is the very Alright, so law is the base. Yeah. We think about a base, here is the base, here is the law. Don't kill anybody, right? What about ethics? Is it illegal to touch somebody on the arm? Is it illegal to touch somebody on the arm? No. It's 
it. Will you go to jail if you touch somebody on the arm? But is it ethical to touch somebody that you don't know and their culture doesn't like touching? Not really, right? Is it ethical for the teacher to touch the student? Hmm? No, right? It's not illegal, but it's not ethical. So we have a kind of code of ethics which is higher than the law. Do you understand the difference? Yes. So first we'll talk about ethics and then later we'll talk about agents. So then discuss with your partner. Give one example of the law and one example of ethical behavior. Like I just gave the example here. So discuss with your partner. An example of a law, an example of something which is eti ethical. situation in business or in life that challenge your ethical standards like a negotiation. Okay? Uh, the, there are some standards which are based on legal principles and there are general ethical standards that go further than the law. So sometimes the law has nothing to do with ethics. So for example, the law in England says you have to drive on the left hand side of the road. Is that a moral, moral argument? You must drive on the left or the right? Is there some moral reason for that? No. Law. Right? It's just the law. But sometimes we have moral principles, which is also a legal principle. Like, you shouldn't kill. That's a law. But is that a moral principle too? Not to kill? Yeah. What? <laughs> you think it's okay to kill people? <laughs> huh? Depends on your religion. If you were a Viking, do you know the Vikings? In their religion, they want to go to war and kill everybody, take all their money. Ancient Greece, also, they were always fighting. Right? But these days, most major religions think killing is wrong. Okay? So, uh, <coughs> We're going to discuss these main ethical standards. The first one is fraud. Do you understand fraud? So fraud is false representation. False representation of a fact that is relied on by the other side. So we need to have three things for it to be fraud. It needs, you need to be lying, first. Second, it needs to be lying about a fact. Okay. And third, it means to be the other side is relying on this fact to make their decision. Okay? Then we have fiduciary duty. Fiduciary duty means if you study financial management, the manager has a fiduciary duty to the stockholder. The stockholder is the owner of the company. So it means they have to be loyal to the company. They can't waste the company's money. And then the, last, the final one, unconscionability. That is just basically 
conduct which is not fair. Can you spell this for us? How do I spell it?